welcome to the Dojo Talk Podcast. Please remove them shoes before entry. Say Master is here and you still have not taken off your shoes. Every day to define man's mission yeah. Look into the sky for divine transmission yeah. Deaf man's vision makes the blind man listen yeah. Eyes on the prize, this is blind ambition Thank you Yo, what's going on world? Welcome to another edition of the Dojo Talk Podcast I am your host, Serial Sensei It is October the 15th My vacation is slowly winding down to an end So I figured try to squeeze in one last episode before i got to get back to work and all that good adult stuff blah (laughs) but um today got movie review on deck and two album reviews also um but real quick since i've been on vacation i've I've had a, a good amount of time to myself to be able to do things i don't really get to do while i'm working so while I can't review every single thing that comes out, uh, I got to give some shout outs and just recognition to like a few games I've played, a few other movies and shows I've been watching. Um, I guess I'll start off. I actually got a chance yesterday to finally see it, which I kind of wanted to see a while ago. And then it came out and I ended up not seeing it. But and time kind of passed and I was like, yeah, hey, I guess I'll catch it later. But. Um, I ended up checking that out yesterday, and as somebody who's never watched the originals, um, I actually, I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty, pretty dope, pretty dope movie, man. A really, I, I wasn't really scared at all of it, but it, it was pretty eerie, which I liked. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was really eerie at points in that movie, like the one scene where, and I, I'm not gonna spoil the, the whole movie, but uh the one scene where the face was on the picture and then the kid goes to uh the picture falls from the wall and the kid goes to pick the picture back up and then the face that was on the picture isn't on the picture anymore like that <laughs> that scene I, I really enjoyed like there were just certain moments in that movie that were you know were really eerie but I, I thought it was really well done um all the kids in that movie did a really great job with the acting um really strong acting from all the kids in that movie and yeah man it, it was a good movie it was a bit long a little bit longer than i, I would have liked but still pretty pretty solid throughout um I, I can't compare it to the originals because i never saw the originals but um from what i saw i, I definitely i definitely enjoyed it though so I, I think it's worth a watch for i guess for people like me if you've never seen the originals and you're like me you're just kind of going into this blind i, I think you'll enjoy it Though the old people behind me (laughs) didn't seem to be fans of it. But I I, I found it pretty enjoyable. Like I said, a bit on the long side. But um, that that would be my only complaint. Uh, It was acting was really good. Story was pretty good. And it was just some really eerie moments in that movie. So overall, I I thought it was pretty well done. So I had to give that. Got to give that a quick shout out. Um... On the anime tip, man, I finally started watching My Hero Academia, which I know I'm really late to the party on, but I've really, really been enjoying the show. I think I'm on I'm on the second season, uh, right after Midoriya, and um, I don't remember the other kid's name. The, the kid with the fire and ice whose name is escaping me, but they just had their big fight uh, at the tournament, and that was awesome. Um for anybody if you've never watched my hero academia just a really quick rundown uh basically it's a world where superheroes are kind of a normal thing and their abilities are called quirks so i think it's something like 80 percent of the population has a quirk and but then there are some people who are born without them and they're just kind of normal and uh, midoriya was one of those kids who he he didn't have a quirk but he ended up getting one. I won't spoil how for people who haven't watched it, but it's kind of his journey to becoming, a, you know, a superhero. But it's really good so far, man. I love the character progression, um, the different kind of quirks and abilities that people have, and love seeing the grind, man. I love characters who have to start from zero, 
and you know kind of work their way up which he, he's definitely doing so yeah man the, uh my hero academia is a pretty pretty awesome show um i mean if you want to just check out the first season it's only 13 episodes so you could probably breeze through that really quick and then i think season two is a bit longer but it's it's a really dope show man i'm, I'm really enjoying it so far i'm, I'm glad i picked it up i know i'm, I'm late to the party <laughs> um, i'm not fully caught up because i believe it's like 38 episodes out now 38 39 and i think i'm on 20 as of this morning i'm on 24 so i'm, I'm getting there but in between my vacation time i've been doing a lot man i've been well been, been a, a good mix of fun and play working uh on this book which um it's finally coming along man finally making progress on this book i've been working on forever and also quick note on that i'll leave a description uh in the link below for an interview i did shout out to lizzo um i kind of talk about uh my book and all of my other like creative endeavors including this podcast so i'll leave a link to that for people who didn't get a chance to catch it or if you haven't listened to it i'll leave a link to that below but um yeah man my hero academia really 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 dope anime and finally man i've gotten a chance to play some video games like i'm always that person who buys video games but i never get a chance to play them because i'm either if i'm not working i'm i'm, I'm writing this book i've been working on if i'm not doing that i'm watching fights or recording the podcast so i made sure during this vacation i sat time aside to uh get myself some video games that i could actually sit down and play and I picked up near automata which has been awesome man really 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 enjoying that game it's kind of sad because I, I go back to work on tuesday um by the time you guys hear this it'll probably be monday so i know once work comes back around i will not <laughs> be bonding with near automata as much anymore so i'm trying to enjoy it while i can but really really good um really good like action adventure game man i'm, I'm really enjoying it so far building up my character and you know that that whole you know you know the grind in the open world games you got to build up your character build up the abilities and your weapons all that good stuff but it's it's a really really dope game and i love the the gameplay and how it at, at moments it feels like devil may cry and then like they do these weird camera switches and mode switches where it'll turn into like a you know like when you're flying the, the your little ship and the mode switches and it's almost like a <laughs> it's almost like a galaga or like a contra game or something like i don't know it's it's kind of hard to describe it if you haven't played it but um I, I would definitely suggest man just if you haven't played near automata or you don't know what it is look, look up a, a just like a quick trailer or gameplay footage of it I, I think it's it's definitely a game worth checking out it's probably one of the better games i've played as of late well i don't get a chance to play much games so I, pretty much any game i play is it's better than what i played as of late but yeah man it's definitely worth a peek though and i finally got my hands on tekken 7 haven't been able to play um tekken 7 that much i played a little bit the first day i got it and i played a little bit of the story mode yesterday but didn't get a chance to really sink my teeth into it uh unfortunately um, pretty sure i honestly won't get a chance to sink my teeth much into it with work coming back around and me kind of getting this book in order so but yeah man i've, I've been enjoying my vacation it's, it's been time well spent good mix of work and play uh getting a lot done but also trying to enjoy myself but at time is slowly dwindling down so uh, i'm getting depressing just thinking about it <laughs> but uh i guess uh real quick as always you can listen to this podcast on soundcloud youtube google play also on itunes uh, please on itunes uh, rate subscribe share with a friend and real quick before i get started on today's episode shout outs to the homie stokes who uh, we had as a guest on our last podcast uh episode 50 when we covered the uh, mighty mouse and I was about to say Mighty Mouse and Moraga. Moraga was on that card, but <laughs> the Mighty Mouse and Ray Borg fight uh, with the legendary Mighty Ombar. Uh, we had the homie Stoves on that episode, and I don't know, man. Stoves got the, the super promotion game going. Like we've <laughs> that podcast is one of the highest viewed podcasts um, that we've had, and I'm gonna give a lot of credit to Stoves for that. He he he's, he probably pushed this episode harder than I did. So, <laughs> but shout out to Stoves, man. And it was a really dope episode, man. That was probably one of the best ones 
uh, we did. I wanted to make sure episode 50 was something great. So uh, I think it turned out pretty good. So if you're an MMA fan and you want some some MMA talk, uh, definitely, definitely give that, that podcast a listen. Uh, that was episode 50. And here we are, man. 51 episodes running strong. So let's just get this episode uh, started. So let me get my notes and stuff in front of me, me being all unprofessional. Um, during my vacation, I've gotten the time to check out some movies. I've been to the movies about twice in the last few days. Um, I got a chance to check out The Foreigner with Jackie Chan. Um, I was pretty hyped for this movie, to be honest. Like, I'm a pretty, I'm a, I'm a big Jackie Chan fan, man. Like, I've been, I've been riding with this dude since man drunken master rumble in the bronx <laughs> um super cop police story operation condor project a which is probably my favorite jackie chan movie project a2 and then you know he had his american you know crossover success with rush hour but this guy's been putting in a lot of work and i don't think he gets a lot of credit for i feel like what he's like contributed to film and like his unique style that i don't think anyone to be honest will ever be able to replicate and part of that reason was why i wanted to see this movie because he's finally playing a serious role compared to his other films where he's normally even though they're action flicks like jackie's typically a kind of like a happy-go-lucky character you know he'll, he'll definitely get in his fair share of scraps but his roles are never really for the most part like they're not too serious and the foreigner he, he finally like flicked that switch he, he played a really serious role there wasn't a lot of laughing and, and joking going on um actually let me give a, a quick shout out uh, so the foreigner was uh directed oh i had it right in front of me and then i lost it i think the gentleman's name was martin campbell um yeah so it was uh, directed by martin campbell um main stars were jackie chan and uh pierce Brosnan. um if you watch Double Seven Gold now, you know who Pierce Brosnan is. But uh, those are like the two main characters, and basically the story is uh, Jackie Chan's daughter um, gets caught up in an incident that she had nothing to do with and ends up dying via car explosion. And Jackie Chan pretty much is uh, on his Liam Neeson tip, <laughs> trying to trying to get revenge, figure out who who killed his daughter, and you know he just kind of gets caught in that world of you know a revenge tale and then you kind of find out in the film that jackie uh jackie's character who's uh in the movie his character's name is kwan uh, kwan is just not your average dude um he he has a <laughs> a specialist background so to speak that makes him a lot more dangerous than the average person uh you also find out uh pierce Brosnan's character whose name is liam hennessy um who's a politician a pretty crooked <laughs> politician who's in engaged in some pretty uh pretty shady shenanigans to say the least and it's basically jackie getting caught up in that world trying to figure out who killed his daughter and through him invading that world you, you get all you know it, it's it's a kind of a typical movie in terms of story it's not anything mind-blowing you, you got crooked politicians who are you know doing things they probably shouldn't be doing got double crosses going on and excuse me people with you know their own hidden motives for for doing certain things and you just got you know Quan who just get thrust into this world and he doesn't really so much care about the politics of it he's just trying to figure out who was the exact person that killed his daughter but while it isn't anything mind-blowing in terms of story i think the strong part of the film is obviously you know if you've been a jackie chan fan you all you, you know most even if you only know him for like his american movies like he's always just this happy-go-lucky character and this is one of the few times you get to see him in a, a serious role and he pulls it off really well man like it's a really it, it gets really dark man he, he does a really good job though of, of selling a serious role of a man who's really out for revenge also really broken that you know he, he loses his daughter and i think just that whole aspect of the film plays really well and then you got pierce Brosnan also who who plays a pretty good crooked politician 
you know, he, he definitely, I think those two, uh, Jackie and Pierce, did a good job of playing roles that we don't often see them in. And I think they both pulled it off really well. And I think that helps carry the film where, where it may lack in terms of like story. Because it's, like I said, it's not like a mind blowing, you know, film in terms of story. But like with what they did do, they executed it really well. Um, action in this movie was pretty good I, I wish it would have had a bit more action um this movie uh, i said it was like 60 40 in terms of storytelling and then action um but the action that <laughs> did appear in the film which was mostly via jackie uh was was pretty good uh i won't spoil all of the scenes but he did slap somebody with a flat screen tv so <laughs> that was it that was that was pretty awesome that was probably the height of the movie for me but um yeah man jackie had some pretty some pretty good fights some pretty intense fights um not not the same as the not the same as like typical martial arts choreography kind that kind of has a bit more of an american feel to it but it's still good nonetheless and like i said you slap somebody with a flat screen tv like, like what else do you <laughs> what else do you want but yeah man we're pretty pretty solid action throughout like i said jackie chan is on his his liam neeson like dudes are trying to take him out and they're trying to take him out and he's giving people the blues and the, you know eventually they find out why he's so dangerous because of the background that they didn't know that he had but yeah man jack jackie gives some people the blues in this movie um i mean he, he takes some hits too though he, he takes some licks but you know you know you know how jackie does man jackie will take his licks but he he doesn't go down easy and on on that front of the film uh it, it definitely delivers like when you when you get the action scenes you're you're rewarded pretty well so yeah man i don't really have too too much to say and i, I can't spoil too much for people who haven't seen it but it's a really it's a, it's a really solid action slash like thriller picture like i said it, it's not gonna blow your mind in terms of story but like if you just want to if you're a jackie chan fan and you just want to see him kind of flex his acting chops into something that we don't get to see him do often i think you'll really really enjoy this and like I, out of the jackie chan movies i've seen as of late from him in like the past few years this is definitely one of the best ones so yeah man that's pretty much all i gotta say i, I won't drag it out too long but yeah the, the foreigner if you're a jackie chan fan definitely give this movie a look man i'm, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it um it's a bit it's a bit long a, l a little bit longer <laughs> kind of like it than i would have liked but you know it's a solid story jackie does a good job of, of pulling off his character he really sells it really well pierce brosnan and holds it down on his end and you got a few other side characters um who also do a pretty good job and a few other <laughs> like subplots in the movie that i won't spoil but you know it, it's, it's just a solid movie man it's, it's like a solid b movie like i said it won't won't blow your mind but it, it's a solid b movie it's if you're a jackie chan fan it's, it's definitely worth a look definitely worth going to the theaters to uh, to check out and i'm glad to see that at least from what i've seen so far i think the budget of this movie was about 35 million and so far i think they've made upwards of like 93 um and it seems like it's doing pretty well overseas so I'm, I'm, I'm good to see that this you know 2017 jackie chan is still putting out great work and you know his, his films are, are still being successful so uh, as a jackie fan that's just awesome to see and like i said man it, if you're not familiar with like jackie fan uh, <laughs> if you're not familiar with jackie chan's like backlog of films like i know i know a lot of people in america like we everybody kind of knows drunken master but like after that pe most people in america only know him for you know like the rush hour films with chris tucker but like go back man watch watch rumble in the bronx watch who am i watch project a watch all of the the you know watch super cop watch all of his his older flicks man this, this dude has made some really just classic action comedy flicks and a, a lot of people like i just feel like a lot of people don't know like how good of a filmmaker he is and how unique like his style of filmmaking is 
he, he does a really good job of blending action and comedy together kind of like that slapstick <laughs> style of comedy but it, it's dope though man it's it's, it's really dope so yeah he, he's he's somebody i think sadly who i don't think he'll be fully appreciated and until he passes and then people will finally realize how like good of a filmmaker and how unique he was so i'm telling you now man go go back and do your, your homework on jackie man dude is he's put out some classics some really really great action comedy flicks so so yeah man but but give the foreigner a look man like i said if you're a jackie chan fan you want to see a nice dramatic role from jackie mixed with some some action and a, a pretty decent storyline it's, 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 it's something worth checking out so but yeah that's pretty much all i gotta say on that so shout out to jackie chan pierce Brosnan. really you know solid movie definitely worth my my movie ticket price and yeah so i won't ramble on that anymore um let's move on to some music man i know i'm late <laughs> reviewing both of these albums um to be honest since i've been working on my book um, my music reviews may slow down a bit i might just focus on fights a bit more um being an indie author <laughs> or attempting to be an indie author is very time consuming so like I, I get a chance to listen to projects but i don't know if i'm going to be reviewing them as much anymore i'm, I'm going to try to because there's a lot of good stuff coming out that i, I want to recognize but in the event that you don't see as many music reviews as maybe you used to um you'll know why it's because I'm, I'm working on other things that i'm trying to put out into the world <laughs> but you know I'm, I'm working man i'm working out here i'm trying but i have two projects today i want to talk about two projects that uh, i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed man so first up the bat is uh, layla's wisdom and this is the second album from rhapsody uh for people who don't know rhapsody is a north carolina mc uh she was signed to or is signed to jamla also i believe has a deal with rock nation now this is her debut rock nation project um some of her other bodies of work uh she got game which i believe that was that was kind of like my introduction to rhapsody um yeah she got game uh beauty and the beast ep crown ep which came out last year um actually her debut album the idea of beautiful came out in like 2012 ish <laughs> something like that so she, she's been around for a good minute um i've always been a fan of her and it's been it's been awesome to see her just kind of grow and progress and see how she just kind of went from being like this underdog mc to now she's on rock nation it's, it seems like her career is is headed and definitely is like it's going into the right direction and this album right here was <laughs> this this was what i needed man if, if, if you're a rhapsody fan i feel like this is this is the one that that we've been waiting for and i guess just a quick side rant like with, with artists like um like logic and let's say like a big crit like I always look at them like they're really talented and they've put out good bodies of work but like i know they have that that one in them like that special one that i know can like just that one that one that'll we can see them really live up to their full potential and i feel like with layla's wisdom like that's what we got finally from rhapsody and not that any of her other projects were bad like she slowly with each project i could tell like she was getting better and when i found out that she got signed to rock nation i was like all right man you gotta you know it's definitely time to put the best foot forward you're on rock nation now you have a lot more eyes on you than you have before so now it's, it's really time to show out and like i said even from the beauty and the beast ep to crown you could tell she was taking those steps but like with layla's wisdom man she didn't just she didn't just take a step man she took a leap forward man this this project is really really like this is easily rhapsody's best body of work probably most complete body of work like this is the perfect album that you need to put out when you're you know you get to a bigger label and you have more eyes on you like this is a good this is a not, no this is a great <laughs> starting point for people who've never heard of rhapsody yeah, like if this is their first time hearing of her 
this is a great start man like this album from top to bottom is just it's so good like i was literally like i was excited while i was listening to this because like with each song it just from first listen man each song it just it kept getting better and better and better um i guess to get into some specifics uh production i actually love that she didn't switch up her team man like the production on this album i, I don't have like the credits uh exactly in front of me but she stuck with pretty much i believe the same people that she's been rocking with since day one so dudes like ninth wonder who handled a lot of production on here uh crisis um i think knots did a beat on here pretty much all of the people she's been rocking with before and the jamba camp in terms of producers like these are the same people who she has on this album but what i thought was really dope was like the production has seemed to it's, it's gotten even better than what it was on her previous works like even though she's working with the same producers they've they, all of them have elevated their game so shout outs to ninth crisis all, all the people over there at jamla who's rhapsody's been been rocking with like they stepped up their game in terms of production and they gave her they, they gave her kind of what an old rhapsody fan would appreciate but they also gave her a, a few new looks on this uh, album, a few different sounds and beats that we've never really heard Rhapsody go over before. Um, the album at times, it can be soulful, but it can also be bouncy. It can be upbeat. Um, a lot of these tracks, which I love, have like these beat switch ups that'll happen towards like the middle of the end of a track. Um, I'll get into it probably more in depth later, but uh, the track uh roller coaster jam called love has like three beat switch ups and my god that last one <laughs> i'll get to it when i start talking about specific tracks but yeah man like it's just it's it's really dope man they, they gave us some really good production like it's, it's it's soulful but not really like super boom bap so I, I feel like it still has an accessible sound to it it can be soulful but it still has like a modern a modern touch to it that i think could still appeal to a wide you know a wider audience and i think that helps especially now that excuse me she's on rock nation so obviously now you're gonna have more eyes on you and like i said if for anybody if this is their first introduction to hearing her and you hear this production like i'm, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it there's, there's something on here <laughs> for everybody but it's, it's a well a well balanced album in terms of sound like i said you get you get some soulful beats you get some some tracks that are a bit more upbeat uh beats like uh sassy and uh what's the other track on here uh but sassy sassy was another standout one which and that's not even like a favorite song of mine on here but like that sound uh for rhapsody is just something we've never heard before like sassy and also pay up uh those are two standout tracks where we've never really heard rhapsody on those kind of like really upbeat almost like not really mainstream but i guess that's the, for rhapsody that might be the closest to a mainstream track you you would get and like i said those aren't really like my favorite tracks but i just i think it's good that she stepped out her box on this and really got a chance to go over uh some, a, a very style of production than what we've heard before and then i mean with bars you already know like <laughs> if, if you're a rhapsody fan or if you're not a rhapsody fan you, you're gonna learn today that the bars are never <laughs> the bars are never lacking man she, she's got bars for days but it's not it's not like a beat you over the head kind of like lyrical miracle style you know it's it's a good mix of giving you content that's relatable good you know she, she's got a good variety of just topics and things like she talks a lot about self-image um you get the second half of the album uh gears a lot toward more like love and relationships um but you get storytelling tracks on here um introspective tracks good you know observational tracks a, a lot of references to you know black culture black power black self-image things like that like she, she covers a good just gamut of of topics so you get a full a full just a range you get everything man like she she leaves no stone unturned but she does such a great job at tackling everything and like i said man with with, with the bars man <laughs> like 
with, with the bars. Like, I guess I'll just get into some favorite tracks. Um, I love how this album start, uh, uh, opening track, Layla's Wisdom. And I didn't know this, uh, at least according to Genius, uh, Layla is actually, I believe, Rhapsody's uh, grandmother's name. So Layla's Wisdom is kind of an, an ode to her in a way. And, you know, she's kind of taking the knowledge that she got from Layla and kind of <laughs> kind of giving it to us. Um, I love the line, uh, keep the style that got, ah, sorry, keep the style you got soulful. Uh, the best of the best gonna fear you. Sky's the limit. I told you, you're gonna be the difference between McDonald's, Burger King, and Whole Foods. And she's like, you know, trying to stand out amongst the, <laughs> the trash rap or the fast food rap, <laughs> whatever you you want to call it. But like that that opening track, man, she drops a lot of a lot of just good gems uh, on that track in terms of her just kind of giving game to to the listener, man, just giving them game for life and how to deal with the industry how to be true to yourself all that good stuff man she 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 covers a whole a whole like i said she she covers the whole gamut of everything and i, I love like she has really really witty wordplay and i love like the really subtle references she uses especially like the sports one like if, if you if you follow rhapsody like personally like if you watch interviews like you know she's a a, a big sports person and that definitely shows on this album uh, i love the just the real subtle line where she says i'm a trip like grayson allen <laughs> if you know who grayson allen is you know why that line <laughs> is hilarious but like I, I love just the little little subtle nods here and there to uh, the sports references that she makes so yeah man Lay layla's wisdom is a really good uh a really good opening track for the album and she definitely gives you the bars like right off top to let you know that <laughs> she, she can definitely spit with the best of them um man there are so many favorite tracks on this like this whole album is like a favorite track but in, in the interest of time i can't cover everything um so i guess i'll skip uh power it's another good track uh featuring uh kendrick lamar and i believe uh, that luke skywalker am i getting that right I know he's also signed to TDE. Um, let me pull up the track because I don't I don't want to get this man's name wrong. Uh, da, 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 no, sorry, I <laughs> said Luke Skywalker, Lance Skywalker, uh, who I believe is also signed to TDE. But um, that's a, a really really dope track. I think that was one of the the lead singles, and I love the topic of the song where uh, she, her, and Kendrick are kind of touching on the subject of power but like just the different facets of power um black power power of believing in yourself um kind of like crooked power in terms of police uh like abusing their power <laughs> the power of booty um it, it's it's a really really just just dope song I, lo I love the the beat on that that i don't know what that little weird that like almost electric weird sound thing if you listen to the track, you know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> I love I love the the instrumental on that track, and like I said, man, Rhapsody's bar and just bars on that track. And then Kendrick comes in, man, he he kills it, and uh, Lance Skywalker does a great job on the hook. That was another favorite track. Um, the track Nobody with uh, Anderson Pack and I think it was Anderson Pack and Black Thought. Um, it's a really long track. It's a, it's a, it's a good <laughs> like seven minutes long. Uh, yeah, features Anderson Pack, Black Thought, and Moonchild. Um, but this was another favorite track of mine. Um, a lot of Rhapsody talking about like nobody knows. Just a lot of things we, a lot of things we don't know, or things we do know but we act like we don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but if you listen to it, you'll you'll get what I'm talking about. But the reason I, I wanted to highlight this track, uh, man, Black Thoughts first. Um, I mean, Black Thought and Rhapsody on a track is is wild enough but uh man a black thoughts verse uh between the world and me like mr tiny he see coats nobody knows the artist that tiny he see quotes laughing the boys they grasping at straws to sniff the dope pen been engaged for ages we should probably elope like bars <laughs> like, i don't even know what else to say man like black thought just bodied that verse like that that whole song is dope but man black thought came through at the end and just just killed it and like i said man this it's the thing i love about this album is like songs like nobody really most of the songs on here like 
Rhapsody does a great job of making a song about a topic, being able to like stick to the topic and have good good content, but still giving you bars along the way. Like it's it's a really good it's a really good mesh of you know I can give you content and give you something to think about, but I can still rap. Like <laughs> it's not just I'm preaching to the choir. You know she's <clears throat> excuse me. She's still letting you know along the way. Like, I can give you good content. I can give you something uplifting or something to think about. But, like, don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm still an MC and I, I can still bar you to death. But it's still not like, it's not delivered in a way that's, you know, like the lyrical miracle. You know, I think it's something that the average person could, like, still listen to and appreciate. But the, the bars are definitely still there. Um,. Man, that, like I said, there's so many standout tracks. Uh, Black and Ugly with BJ the Chicago Kid. Um, she talks a, a, a lot about uh, self-image in that track. Um, that's that's another really good one. Um, you Should Know featuring Busta Rhymes. Um, you want to talk about blacking out <laughs> on a track. Like, she just, this, this is the one track, I mean, a, a lot of tracks she goes in, but she really goes in on this track, man, and then the second verse, where she is just, the flow on the second verse is just out of control, like, <laughs> the, the way she bodied that second verse, the way she just flowed over that beat, and it was just like, I don't even understand how you can just how have you been rapping for this long and you haven't gotten tired yet like she she was just bodying that song man but it's whew, influenced by many but i'm a whole new star yeah there's levels to this but i'm a whole new floor they talking keys to success but i'm a whole new door and, and like she was killing this song man and that's just one line this that whole track really was a quotable but like, there's so many witty lines and bars in that song but uh, man 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 oh man and then Buster Rhymes part actually marks like a transition point in the album where I feel like the first half of this album is a bit more well kind of with the exception of um pay up and sassy like it's a bit more serious um I feel like uh I feel like it's really bar heavy in the first half and then like right at the end of um you should know buster rhymes comes in and as he quotes get on get on says it's very white and he kind of does like this this love interlude and that kind of sets the tone for the second half of the album because like i said the second half uh definitely focuses a lot more on like love and relationships so you get tracks uh which i guess i'll mention because i talked about this earlier um a roller coaster jam called love featuring uh, music soul child and gwen bun if i'm saying that right um that track is kind of pretty much what the title implies you know just the ups and downs of relationships and the different emotions and everything but as i mentioned before like uh, on the production tip on this album a lot of the tracks have these beat switch ups and this track has three of them <laughs> and man that 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 third beat switch man is so smooth and then music uh so child comes in like his vocals are just they're just perfect oh accidentally <laughs> accidentally hit play i don't know if y'all just heard that <laughs> but um yeah man that third beat switch up when like you start to hear music so child start harmonizing and then that is so just smooth like that's definitely one of my favorite tracks just because of that the last like minute and a half of that song it's just it's so smooth the way it rides out um and you get tracks like you used to love me with terrace martin he added his his nice little little touch to that track um knock on my door uh once again with bj the chicago kid and i guess real quick the features on this album all did a great job man like even the people i didn't know like i said you get people like kendrick uh lance skywalker anderson pack bj the chicago kid but um and of course black thought but then you get um I'm kind of jumping around <laughs> but uh the track riding with gq i don't know who that gentleman is but he bodied his verse uh buster rhymes like i said he's on here um the last track uh jesus coming which features amber uh navrin i'm probably butchering that name but 
point being man like all of the features contribute really well on this album without like outshining rhapsody like i feel like everybody's every feature adds something special to the track that they're on without like overshadowing rhapsody or her getting like lost in the mix like she makes sure she's still front and you know front and center you know still commanding the song but these other people are, are definitely these other artists are just adding to songs that are already great and like i said uh, to get back uh, knock on my door uh it's a, a good track with her <laughs> kind of like spitting game to her neighbor you know trying to get to know him all that good stuff that that track was was pretty cool um Ooh Wee, which uh a pretty cool track um i accidentally hit the play button again <laughs> i don't know if you guys heard that again but uh Ooh Wee with anderson pack um I honestly could have done without the song only because it was already on the crown ep so i'd heard it already but it's not a bad track um but the the last track i'll mention which is actually the last track on the album um jesus coming a really kind of like sad somber note to end the album on but it's a really good storytelling track um and she kind of tackles the story from like three different perspectives or tackles three different um she tackles like three different perspectives but i just want to key in on that second verse where she's describing uh like a daughter and a mother walking outside and they end up getting shot with some strays that was happening via an argument that they had nothing to do with but like she's describing the emotions of what like going through the mom's head of you know like they get shot and like they die but she's like talking it through but like halfway through the second verse she switches it up and she raps from the perspective of the daughter who got shot which is like a little kid and she actually like switches her voice up to be like a kid while she's rapping and like it's really like sad when you think about it but like looking at it from a artistic and like a talent level like that was really really dope that not only did she switch perspectives but like she actually changed her voice to sound like a little kid and it just it made the song that much more powerful as it's really um uh the sample i don't know where the sample comes from in that song um i don't know it just adds a certain feeling to the track that just makes it really really powerful like i said it's a really really somber way to end the album but i just it's, it's a really really good track though man it, it definitely showcases uh rhapsody's like storytelling ability and like i said just being a versatile mc like she's shown a, a lot on this album that is, she's a lot more than just bars like she she can tell a good story she can make a good song she can switch up her flows any way she wants like she she's the complete package man she's she's the real deal i could keep going on and on about this album but um i'm pretty sure when i do my end of the year list that this is this is gonna be in the top 10 this might even be top five like this this album is is so good like like i said from bars to to good content to songs with like actual meaning but it's not like overly preachy really good production great beat switch ups awesome features like it's i don't have, <laughs> I don't have much negative to say about this album i guess like the only thing really would be I, I do tend to enjoy the first half a bit better because like i said right at the end of you should know it's kind of when the album switches to more of like the love section of the album but like even those songs are not bad songs so like i don't really have much negative <laughs> to say about this album this is easily one of the best albums i've heard this year like not even a, a question this I'm, I'm pretty confident this will be in my top 10 by the end of the year and like i said it, it might depending on how the rest of this year goes this might even hit top five like this album was it was really that good um if you've never heard of rhapsody if you never listened to rhapsody you need to listen to this album like you <laughs> you need to give this a listen and if you're a rhapsody fan there's no way you won't like this like this is easily her best body of work she is she's hit she, she's hit a stride man and she hit that peak that you you would want to see from her like you a, a lot of us you know we've been enjoying her projects but we've been waiting for like that one that you know will 
kind of like Flores was, you know, her, her arrival, so to speak. And this was that, man. This was that album. This is her arrival. This is her saying, like, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I am one of the best MCs <laughs> in this industry, regardless of gender. Like, she she's here, man. She she's here, and I'm I'm was thoroughly pleased that that she released this, and I actually got at her on Twitter to ask if there will be physical releases of this, and she said there will be. So I'm awaiting that because I, I bought this via iTunes because I wanted to support. But whenever those physicals come out, um, I'm definitely uh, copping a physical of this. Cause it, she deserves support, man. Like su support good music, support good artists, support the bars. <laughs> I'm here for the bars, man. I'm, I'm here for this album. This album is 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 just really good, man. I, I don't, I, I can't sing enough praises really for this album. Other than you, if you're listening, if you can hear my voice, you need to give this a listen. Um, yeah, man go listen to it that's that's all i gotta say man rhapsody came through in a major way she dropped a, a really really great awesome high quality <laughs> project man top to bottom this album is just it's so good i've i've already gone back and listened to this like repeatedly and it, just, it gets better every time i listen to it and i still haven't gotten tired of of <laughs> playing this in my headphones so shout outs to Rhapsody, shout outs to Jamla, everybody over in that camp, man. Like you, you guys got a monster on your hands, and it's been awesome to see her career grow and progress. And she can only go up. So if you've never heard of Rhapsody before, man, get get familiar because she's she's here. She's definitely she's definitely here, man. And I'm I'm all for it. Always supporting. Um, I'm, I'm copping and listening to anything she puts out but this this was her uh magnum opus if i'm saying that term right this this, this was her her arrival man this, this this is what we we needed what i wanted and i got it <laughs> so shout out to rhapsody layla's wisdom phenomenal album go go listen man that's that's all i gotta say just go listen and and support go spend your money you know the, these are the kind of artists we need at the forefront on to another album that floored me <laughs> um daniel caesar with Freudian. so kind of funny thing about this album the first two times i listened to it i kind of like had stuff like going on in the background so i didn't have my full attention on the album so like i was listening to it i was like you know this is good but nothing's really standing out it didn't really like click for me those first two times i listened to it and then one time I was kind of sitting around the house, didn't really have much to do, wasn't a whole lot going on. So I was like, you know what, let me listen to this again. Because I, I realized like I wasn't giving it a, a fair. I'm sorry, my laptop was about to die and I had to reach to get my charger cord. <laughs> so, I was trying to do it very nonchalantly, but um yeah i don't want to just die while i'm recording so i'm trying to get my cord and it is evading me there we go i'm sorry we have unprofessional moments on this podcast it happens <laughs> but uh yeah with the the freudian album like i said the, the first two times i was listening to it i just it wasn't clicking because i had other stuff going on and then this third time i was like you know what let me give this a fair shot let me actually really sit down and and listen to this while i don't have you know anything distracting me or you know or going on in the background and my god man this is uh <laughs> this is an amazing r&b project like that third time it it definitely like from the first track i was like did what <laughs> like how did i not thoroughly enjoy this the very first time i listened to it like that third listen this album just slapped me in the face and i just i realized how good it was um i'm not sure much of daniel caesar's history this is my pretty much like my introduction to him uh kind of funny though because i used to see the thumbnail of his video um i think it was for the we find love song 
like it would always pop up in my youtube suggested section but like i just never really listened to it and then i just kept hearing about this album and people hyping it up and i'm always for some good r&b because uh, <laughs> i always say before people talk about hip-hop is dying man I, I find it hard to find good r&b that i like nowadays even way more so than, <laughs> than hip-hop so yeah man I, I i wanted to give this a listen to see if it was as good as people said it was and man it, it was even better like daniel caesar is a really really great songwriter this album has some really good melodies great production some really good hooks um, i love the the soul but also like this gospel influence like it's almost like a gospel undertone that this album carries and i just so much feeling <laughs> like if you if you listen to this like you you got this it's gotta make you feel something man like you don't have a soul if this album doesn't make you feel feel something like this 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 joint hit me like it, it hit me and i i was trying to go and listen to other projects and literally i couldn't because i kept coming back to this album like i put so many <laughs> i put so many projects on delay that because i just couldn't put this album down man it's it's just so good it's, it's only 10 tracks but like there, there are no there's not one bad song literally there are no bad songs on this album there may be songs i like more than others but there isn't one bad track on here um I, and i can't really go in too deep because it's you know with, with r&b albums you get you know songs about love relationships breakups making up that whole you know the topics are kind of similar but it's just like the way that he does it it's just it's really 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 good like just the whole sound and the sonics of this album like everything is just it's just perfect like i said he i think he's a really really good songwriter um he does a really good job of conveying emotion capturing emotion through his lyrics and and what he writes and the way he describes things so like i said while it not may not be groundbreaking in terms of like a new concept but it's just the execution of it is is flawless man literally just i can't do standout track. every song on here is a <laughs> standout track i guess i'll just run through uh i'll run through a few and it's hard not to mention every track because literally like i love every song on here but just to go through some favorites um uh, the second track on this album, uh, The Best Part, featuring her. And quick side note, um, I haven't listened to much of her. I know, I think she just put out a new project not long ago. Um, but she's also an R&B artist who's been getting some steam as of late. But um, after hearing The Best Part, like I, I feel like Daniel Caesar and her need to do, like maybe not a full album. I can just do an EP together. Because it seems like these two just have really amazing chemistry. And it, it definitely came together well. Um on that track and uh best part is just kind of a track of them describing like you know how much in love they are with their partner um but i love the line man um you're my water when i'm stuck in the desert you're the tylenol i take when my head hurts like it's little subtle lines like that that just like you, got, you gotta have a heart man like <laughs> like this album gets you in the field man but it's it's just those little subtle lines like that like i, I really like his his songwriting style but like yeah daniel and her just amazing chemistry on that track it, it just you feel it man like <laughs> if like i said man if you, if you listen to this album man, you, you're gonna feel it you, you you have to feel it um another great track hold me down um and real shout out i had to actually dig for this because i wanted to give her credit um the background vocals are from uh I'm, hopefully i'm pronouncing this right Cadero tribe um who is a female vocalist i'm not sure from where i've never heard of her before prior to this but uh she did a really good job on that track and i love the the second half of this track because it's like i said there, there are a lot of i can't even say subtle you, you sense a lot of like gospel influence in this album and this album actually kind of like rhapsody's album a lot of these songs have like these switch ups towards like the middle of the end and uh hold me down it'll start off one way and then like the last minute 
it switches to this uh, interpolation of an old Kirk Franklin song called Hold Me Now. Um, but the, it's done so well, man. Like that just slight little gospel touch is. <sighs> like I said, man, if you if you don't feel this album, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry, my my power cord. Y'all are gonna hear me get up. So I went to plug in my power cord, and my power cord got unplugged, and my laptop's at zero percent. Sorry for my unprofessional interruptions, but anywho, <laughs> hold me down, man. The 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 last like minute of that track is just like ah. Uh, that this is his whole album is just like that like it's just those <laughs> a bunch of those moments rolled into one um another standout track uh i'll probably say best part is probably my favorite song on here um but this next track we find love is probably my number two um really also another song where you can clearly hear like the the gospel influence and also i feel like like the hook of this song kind of gives me like a john legend a lot of John Legend is feel. I don't know if it's just me, but I, I kind of got that from the hook. But anywho, um, another really beautifully written song. Kind of, it's kind of weird though because the the song itself, like if you actually listen to it, is kind of him talking about a, a failed relationship. But it has this really like uplifting feel to it, almost as a way to say like. I get it this relationship's over but it's like I'll, I'll be okay like i'll i'll figure out how to how to get through this but like that that song and if you've heard of daniel c you probably heard that song because i'm pretty sure like this was a single and probably like one of his most uh popular songs to date but oh man that song is amazing like that's that's the word for this whole album like it's just it's <laughs> it's it's just amazing r&b man amazing r&b with some soul and a a nice little sprinkle of a gospel that that track amazing um the very next track after that uh entitled blessed where he's kind of talking about kind of him i guess getting his his girl back and he's got the relationship back on track and he's talking about how he's uh he says "I'm, i'm i'm Ah, oh, what's what's he said? I'm blessed, but I'm a uh, I'm a mess, but I'm blessed to be stuck with you. Something like that. I'm I'm probably messing up words, but basically, him you know appreciating his his partner and glad that you know he has it now and all of that, you know, all that good stuff. But again, the gospel influence. There's like a, a bridge section of the song when he starts singing that he's coming back home, and it just has this really like nice choir in the background and it's like that one section of the song just hits so hard man it's i don't know what else to say about this album man like (laughs) there's so many good songs like and i didn't even mention all of them man like get you is great um new roses uh, sorry new roses um take me away with sid transform with uh charlotte day wilson um the last track freudian which i love that he did and not a lot of people do this anymore like back in the day you would always get like the hidden song on the album and like if you looked at the the time you would see a song that was like 10 minutes and it was like why is the song 10 minutes long and maybe like the first three minutes would be a song and then you get this long yap and then he'll throw a bonus in at the end and that's what he did with the uh the last track uh, freudian on here where maybe like the first three or four minutes is like the actual song and you get like this long pause and then right at the end you get another song and close out the album and it this album's great <laughs> i don't know what else to say man like literally from top to bottom there are no bad songs on here like this album flows so good together like all of the songs excuse me seamlessly just float into the next song and like by the time you get to the end you're like come on man like we you could have gave me like two more tracks (laughs) like it is everything about this album man production is really good great instrumentation 
great use of features like i said almost like the rhapsody album where the features complement uh daniel caesar perfectly without outshining them everybody's adding something great to the track it this album might i don't lie for a second uh I don't know if I said this before, but like uh, the Joey Badass album is probably still my favorite album this year. But this is a strong <laughs> number two, and I this might this might hit number one. Like it might. Uh, I'll see how this this year plays out. Still got two more months left, so we really never know what happened between now and then. But this this flawless. That's all I can say. Flawless R and B album. Like <laughs> literally, man. Flawless R and B album. If you like if you like that older style R and B, you know, not not this trap R and B that we got now. I mean no diss to it. We all like what we like to each its own, but I that kind of R and B just doesn't really do anything for me. If if you want that R and B that has like some some real feeling into it, some really great songwriting, like this this is where it's at this it, it literally it it can't get any better than this <laughs> like this is one of the best r&b albums i've heard in a very long time and yeah man i don't i can't say nothing else man daniel c's a freudian phenomenal <laughs> phenomenal project definitely give this a listen definitely buy the album like I said, it's only 10 tracks long, but there are no bad songs. Like, you can play this all the way through, and you you won't be disappointed. I'm not going to go on anymore about that album, man. I, I can't. There's nothing else. There's nothing else to say, man. Like, this, this album is all, it's nearly perfect. Like, <laughs> if you like R&B, you have to listen to this. You have, you, you have to feel something on this album. If you don't feel anything on this something's wrong with you it's not him it's you you're the problem <laughs> like this <sighs> yeah that's, that's all i got man i i, I can't I, i'd just be rambling on at this point but my god that's about it for today man i, <laughs> I ain't gonna keep y'all here no longer that's that's about all i got man so quick recap man the Foreigner by Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan, dope film. Uh, if you want to check that out, uh, also as I briefly mentioned, uh, it pretty good movie. Never saw the original, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. On the video game tip, Near Automata, Tekken Seven, both highly recommended. Anime tip, My Hero Academia. Um, if you're like me and you're late to the show, uh, give it a watch. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. Really good characters, good story, great character progression anything everything you want to see in an anime that show pretty much has so definitely enjoying that um, and on the music tip man rhapsody layla's wisdom phenomenal album from from her great to see her shout outs to jamla shout outs to rock nation and daniel caesar freudian salutes <laughs> that's all i can do man just salutes to a phenomenal project just really really good project um so yeah man give, give everything i mentioned to listen or watch um i'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed uh, in terms of future reviews like i said earlier i am kind of uh working on a book on the side which has been very time consuming um and i'm, I'm really trying to get serious and put the you know get the final kinks in get this worked out because i, I definitely want to release this book next year so I'm trying really hard to make that happen. So in between writing and, you know, recording podcasts and watching fights, like I don't always have my time is is, <laughs> is being taken away from me um, and then work is coming back up. So I'm not sure if the music reviews will be coming as much as I want them to, because like I said, I'm about to divert a lot of attention to this book. But I'm going to try to still keep the reviews going as much as I can. Um, I listen to. Uh, the new Wu-Tang album, I copped that the other day, um, kind of linguist album, I um, definitely want to review that, and yeah, I've been keeping my ear open, I'm, I'm still listening to projects, still got projects I want to want to check out, haven't gotten a chance to listen to uh, Open Mike Eagle's new album yet, so I still got other albums I need to check out, but some new ones I have peeped that I want to try to review, so 
hopefully I can get those out to you guys. As always, the fights uh, with my co-host Anti Cool definitely still covering those. So uh, we actually had a lot of fights going on this weekend that hopefully we'll briefly get to mention on the next podcast. But uh, next UFC card, I believe, is the uh, Darren Till and Donald Cerrone fight. So we'll be covering that. Also, hint to the hint. Hopefully, we'll be having a guest um, once again. <laughs> guests seem to work pretty well on this show, so we uh, we might be having a guest for that episode. So I'm hoping that that pans out. Um, and once again, shout out to the homie Stokes, episode 50. If you're an MMA fan, please listen to that that episode. It's been getting some some good steam. <laughs> shout out to Aaron Pico and Adam Milstead, who who I think uh, liked the podcast post on Instagram. So shout out to them too. Trying to like I said, always trying to grow the fan base so if you like mma you like music a little bit of movies all that good stuff we got you covered so yeah man that's pretty much all i got you can listen to the dojo top podcast on soundcloud on youtube google play also on itunes if you're on itunes please rate subscribe share with a friend like the dojo top podcast on facebook and if you want to you can follow me on twitter at serial sensei so that's pretty much about it for today sorry y'all had to bear with me reaching over i probably got really loud in the mic i apologize <laughs> reaching over trying to plug my laptop charger in so i didn't die while i was recording but um yeah man appreciate you guys for listening this has been episode 51 of the dojo top podcast i'm your host serial sensei and until next time i will catch you guys later peace